Are you in the mood for some comfort food? Maybe some down-home cooking right along the banks of the rivers of America inside Disneyland Park? Then look no further than River Bell Terrace. It's dining review time. Let's go. Well, hello, my friends. Wait for the Kingdom Report with you once again, covering all the latest dining options at the Disneyland Resort. And today, we are headed to River Bell Terrace. Dine on delectable down-home cooking with delicious dishes and beverages. In fact, you can sit down to a leisurely lunch or dinner while enjoying riverfront views at this iconic Disneyland Park eatery. Located in the heart of Frontierland, River Bell Terrace has remained a fan favorite for generations and provides memorable meals that delight all ages. You may even catch a glimpse of the Mark Twain Riverboat gliding down the rivers of America as you feast on fare from a southern menu loaded with charm. And no matter what time of day you're joining the River Bell Terrace, open right now only for lunch and dinner, you'll find a variety of delicious dishes that are sure to satiate any appetite. Choose from a bounty of hearty crowd pleasers like mac and cheese, tofu, and a pulled pork sandwich. And for dessert, you can treat yourself to house-made pudding or the monkey bread. After notifying them that I had arrived via the Disneyland app, I was quickly met by a hostess at the front door who brought me inside to have a seat at this table service restaurant. The restaurant itself is very clean, not a whole lot to look at in terms of detail. It's a wide open space that's really just dedicated to getting as many people sat as possible, which was very clear from the beginning. However, a wonderful air-conditioned space that has sweeping views of New Orleans Square and the rivers of America at the Frontierland. So not bad at all in this sort of roundabout type of restaurant. You can also be sat on the outer patio, which overlooks the riverfront as well and during California's most wonderful seasons, this is a terrific place to sit and dine on all of the delicious dishes that the River Bell Terrace has to offer. And for those of you who long for the days of Big Thunder Ranch Barbecue, the restaurant that was completely demolished in order to make way for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, well, here you will find at least a couple of items that harken back to the barbecue style dishes that Big Thunder Ranch Barbecue had. Uh, a little bit more creative, a little bit more classy in this environment, not just buckets of food that are dumped on your table, but instead creative flair put into each and every menu item, as the menu is not necessarily all that big in this location either. Kicking things off with a bit of a chilled house salad for the sake of an incredibly warm Disneyland day during this filming. I wanted to go with something that was going to be refreshing, and boy did this deliver. The house salad here at Riverbell Terrace packed with arugula, apple, gorgonzola, dried cranberries, candied pecans, and apple vinaigrette all for $7. You know, $7 doesn't get you very far at a place like Disneyland. However, this salad was quite satisfying. A great balance of the savory and the sweet with the uh, candied pecans and the apple, and then you had the apple vinaigrette, the gorgonzola there. A fantastic way to start the meal, and I would not suggest that you go with the creamy pimento cheese dip uh, that comes with toasted bread and celery. I've had that before, and it wasn't worth it. You might want to stick with the house salad. And in a matter of no time, the entree had arrived. A quick note about speed in this restaurant. Unlike Cafe Orleans, where I felt like they were just rushing me to get out of the restaurant so they could turn the table over, the Riverbell Terrace allowed me to leisurely enjoy my meal. They kept an eye on everything, and they spaced out the appetizer and the entree to make sure that I was really taking a load off and enjoying myself. It goes so very far when you think about it. And sitting in front of us here is the entree of the Burnt Ends Grilled Cheese. For $23, this is barbecue brisket, pickled pepper relish with house-made baked beans and a side of my choosing. Of course, I went with the coleslaw this time, mainly because this dish is going to be quite heavy. I'm also glad that I started things out with the house salad. The baked beans dish, a medley of beans, if you will, was delightful. Not only a savory treat of baked beans, but a bit of sweetness woven into the sauce. It was something that if I could have had uh, maybe an entire bucket of the baked beans, I would have gone with that. Uh, Dare I even say far better than what I remember experiencing back at Big Thunder Ranch Barbecue. 
And from those beans, we move right along to the coleslaw. As mentioned, this was something that I wanted to purposely get as a side, mainly to help balance out the heaviness of the beans and the burnt ends grilled cheese. Uh, it was exactly what the doctor ordered, crisp, chilled, and a bunch of sweetness woven in for the sake of balancing out that barbecue smokiness, that sort of rich taste that you get with everything else. It was ideal to go with the coleslaw. Now, for those of you who are fans of cheese, you may have found the perfect dish in this plate in the Burnt Ends Grilled Cheese. It is packed full of cheddar that completely envelops all of the barbecue brisket. That cheese is so strong and completely packs a wallop of tasty goodness that uh, no doubt you are not going to be counting calories when you eat a plate like this because if you did you might never eat it but it's uh definitely something that hits you right in the ribs when you think about comfort food it is an excellent choice and a huge portion something that i almost didn't even finish i tried my best but it's such a rich sandwich that it can be a very difficult prospect to be sure and in addition to that you also got your potato barrels underneath yep you got your tater tots there and uh, some crispy onions to top it off. Like I said, a very rich dinner to be sure. This is almost something that I would recommend splitting if you were interested. It is that rich, it is that heavy. Maybe get two appetizers and split the entree if you are so inclined. In a matter of no time, the check had arrived and you see there a grand total of 31.25. That was what it was going to cost out the door before tip, of course. Not bad when you think about how much food we got on the plate here today. Uh, certainly the Riverbell Terrace, a location that is probably the easiest to get a table service reservation in. Uh, a lot of folks have been sharing just how difficult it is to get dining reservations at Disneyland nowadays. Well, the Riverbell Terrace seems to have the most frequent openings when it comes to securing a reservation and uh, one of our strategies as always we like to remind people go ahead and try to book the day before if you're unable to do it well in advance the day before you trip the day before you are going to visit go ahead open up that disneyland app and see if you can secure a reservation for yourself typically we've had very good luck when we try out something like that. Once again, you have the option to sit outside or inside at the Riverbell Terrace. The outside is very scenic, right across from Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course the very busy walkway that leads right on out to the Rivers of America. You can't beat that view. There is uh, nothing like it. A truly spectacular vision while you have your lunch or dinner. And as a reminder, only open for lunch and dinner at this time as the Riverbell Terrace continues its phased reopening process here in Frontierland. Let us know what you thought. Have you had anything at the Riverbell Terrace? We would love to know. Leave it in our comment section. And as always, I have been Wade enjoying myself some dining delights at Disneyland. We'll see you next time for another Eat Disney Dining Review. To all who come to this happy place, welcome.